Thank you for joining us here at the Shelby Township Library. My name is Dale Paris, and I'm the new director here at the uh, library. I've been here about five, four or five weeks now, and um, had a wonderful uh, introduction to all of the services that Shelby provides. Uh, here at the library, you can do just about anything. You can get some uh, traditional books. They can be children's or adults. They can be for uh, any age group. In addition, we have started our OverDrive digital book service. You really have to uh, look into the possibilities of that. The digital world is just going to mushroom and we're going to be part of it. Uh, we do that through our partnership with the Suburban Library Cooperative. We share those resources with our partners all around Macomb County. So your library is the center place for your um, learning, but you can also go off into all different kinds of directions. And we're starting to ramp up some of our programming activities as well. So Catherine Schmidt, our uh, youth librarian, she'll give you some of the information that uh, she has on her programming. And Elizabeth Campion, she'll be uh, joining us also a little bit later. She'll be doing quite a bit of the adult programming that we'll do more and more and more of. Right now it's Christmas time here around the library and you may have the opportunity to come in and look at our friends book uh, table. Beautiful, beautiful books that have been bound up with ribbon. They're sold for a set price, usually about $6. They can be wonderful uh, gifts for your family and you may just want to tear into them yourself. We also have our tree that's outside in the lobby now, all decorated, and about 30 beautiful kids and parents that helped out on the entire uh, tree trimming. They did a wonderful job. Come on down here and take a look at it. And so that's a little bit about what's happening around the uh, Shelby Township Library. And again, I had mentioned uh, uh, that I had been here about five weeks now. And I come from uh, the Harper Woods Public Library and the McDonald Public Library, actually, where I live in New Baltimore. Those were my two previous places over the last 20 years. Um, so Shelby is a really good uh, segue for me as a professional, and I'm really um, starting to enjoy the um, different uh, ambiance and the people and the different uh, working conditions. We have a lot of work to do here, that's for sure, but uh, one day at a time. And some of the things there that I've always remembered and people that are wiser than me have told me is uh, make sure you have a little bit of life balance. And the one thing that I do that gives me those relaxation uh, moments is uh, a whole bunch of hiking and camping and backpacking actually uh, with friends and relatives. And we've uh, had many adventures out in the backwoods of Michigan. I've been as far as California, Montana, Maine, Virginia all on um, backpacking trips. Uh, the way that we got interested in there is uh, one of the buddies of mine, uh, they decided that they wanted to get a little bit more physically fit. And I had always done a lot of softball and, and other types of uh, cross training like that. So I was up for it. You know, I said, well, okay, uh, this, they, we can do some uh, different adventures. And we had always done a lot of um, like camping, but this was the uh, rugged version. It just took it to the next step. So. Of course, we decided to do one of the most hardest uh, trips for our first one over at Isle Royal National Park. And so after the uh, boat ride over and uh, getting acclimated and everything, we went from one side of the island to the other, from uh, Windigo on the one side and then off to the west side. Unbelievable territory, but boy was that a hard trip. And we really, uh, but it really paid off dividends, it really hooked us. Um, into that uh, hiking and, and for many years we did um, at least one big trip every one or two years and so we've, we've been out uh, and done some really uh, uh, spectacular things and so nowadays with the family um, we do a little bit uh, more closer to home and so more um, canoe trips and um, casual camping with our camper and setups on Lake Michigan and everything but um, the one thing about uh, Lake Michigan it uh, has such a, a, a wide variety of uh, terrain and also you have the opportunity to basically have a, a canvas that's in front of you that's completely flat and if you're really lucky as you gaze out towards uh, Wisconsin as the sun sets you can see the green flash and I've, I've, it really exists and I've seen it twice and both times over Lake Michigan. So that's a little bit about my background and uh, but a little bit about what's going on at the library and then we'll uh, turn it back over to Katherine Schmidt and Elizabeth Campion and they'll tell you a little bit more about what's going on in their areas in December. Every day is a brand new journey of discovery for your baby. And when that journey is by car, 
The latch system will help keep them safe. Anchor, tether, latch. It's easier and makes your car seat secure. So your baby's journeys will be safe and sure. To learn more, visit safercar.gov. Welcome back to the library show. I've got a really great new couple new databases to share with you. Uh, Mel, the Michigan Electronic Library, has a grant that they were able to provide some early learning databases for younger kids, um, preschool through early elementary. There are three different databases that are um, World Book products. There's Early World of Learning for the youngest children, that's preschool through about kindergarten. Then we've got uh, World Book Kids, which is the online version of the research encyclopedia for aimed at younger kids, the, the Discover Encyclopedia series. And it's kind of a neat thing. We've got it in English language version and the other, the third database is the same uh, encyclopedia but in Spanish. The Spanish version has a visual dictionary and they have full text of Spanish language newspapers from about 16 different countries. So there are 30 different newspapers from around the world, daily newspapers, that you can read in Spanish right from this database. So in addition to the, the regular content that would be in the print encyclopedias, there are videos embedded in the database that will sh take you to videos of the animals or the country or different, whatever information you're looking up. There are additional images that can be viewed and printed. There are links to websites that the World Book staff have pre-selected. So they're content that's gonna be appropriate for the right, for the age and the topic and gonna be useful to your kids. Also, because it is from the the actual print book, there are citations with that information so that if kids need to use a book source for a project, you have that information to show that it, it's a legitimate source of um, information. And they even, a lot of the articles show Lexile numbers. I know a lot of the schools are looking for Lexile numbers and they want the kids to be reading at their level. And so the articles that you pick will have Lexile numbers to go along with what you've chosen. So yeah, the World Book product has a lot of great things for the kids, the subjects that the kids are using in school, whether it's animals or science or places in the world, um, famous people, there's something there so that you can get to that from home. Um, maybe when you can't make it to the library at the last minute or you need one more source, that's there for you. The other product is that Early World of Learning, and this one's a really nice one. It has all kinds of stories and songs and puzzles and games and different activities that the children can do online. Much of the content is read to the children as they're moving their mouse on the screen so they can follow along and participate and they don't need to know how to read. Um, but then the stories, often the, the text that's being read to them is highlighted so they can tell what words are being spoken and they can follow along and learn that recognition of the print and of the words. Um, in addition, there's videos and other fun little things to go along with what they're learning and they can learn nonfiction things or little stories to help develop that literacy. The other nice thing that I hear parents ask for a lot are some print activities to do extra. And I know older kids are thinking, why would you want homework? But for the littler ones, if they see their older siblings doing homework and doing projects, they wanna be right there with you. They wanna be just like their older brothers and sisters and they want homework. And so parents are always looking for fun things to print out to do that go along with some kind of learning. And this World Book Early World of Learning does have print activities that can be printed out and done along um, at the kitchen table or wherever so that your youngest learners can do something extra and do something fun to help develop early literacy skills. All these products are available through the MEL databases. When you're here in the library, it's very seamless. You just pick the MEL databases and click on it and it recognizes you're here in the Shelby Township Library. When you're at home, they do want to make sure that you really are a Michigan resident. Um, you'll go to mel.org, pick one of those databases, and we were just testing it earlier. It does ask for either your library card number or a Michigan driver's license to recognize that you really are a Michigan user and log on, and um, all that is there for you. Storytime will be starting up again in January. Saturday, January 4th is registration day for the upcoming Storytime sessions. That is in person, so You'll want to um, stop by the library that day, bring your library card to show your residency, and, and sign up for story times. 
We've got programs for toddlers, that's two to three and a half year olds. Those are Tuesday mornings. There'll be a session at 10 and a session at 11. And then we've got sessions for preschoolers on Tuesday afternoons at two o'clock and Wednesday mornings at 10. Um, the preschoolers are three and a half to five year olds. So you can come in, sign up for the sessions that are appropriate for your kids and those programs will start then in mid-January and go through the spring. Uh, we also have for um, families that have evening availability, we will be having family story times, the jammies and books are coming back. Those will be Thursday evenings, usually once or twice a month starting in January at 6.30 on Thursday evenings and our popular baby bears program for the littlest ones, those will be alternate Fridays as well starting in January and so you can check the website for those dates they'll be published soon and we'll be right back after this break. Today is a special day. Today we gather as a nation and as an international community to recognize the selfless decision of one of the most influential women of our time. She's been recognized by religious figures and politicians around the world. To us, she's just Rachel. But to the rest of the world, she's the woman who, after having one too many drinks, chose not to drive home buzzed. Here today to honor Rachel, is the family whose lives she spared. Welcome back. 2013 was a great year for really good books. Uh, I want to talk about a few books that you might have missed. The first one is The Death of Bees by Lisa O'Donnell. This is the story of two Glasgow, Scotland teenagers. It starts right in the beginning with telling you that the girls have just buried their parents in the backyard. What comes next as the older sister tries to take care of her younger sister with the help of a neighbor who's got some secrets of his own make for a fascinating, gripping story. Another one also set in the United Kingdom is The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry by Rachel Joyce. This one's a sweeter tale, a story of an older man, he's long retired, and he suddenly receives a letter. A friend of his, someone he knew years ago, is dying of cancer and asks that he come visit her. He sets out to send her a letter, and as he walks to the post office, he decides to keep walking, and then he walks again and again, and it becomes a mission to walk the whole length of England to hand deliver the letter to his friend Queenie. Back in America, this is a book called The Twelve Tribes of Hattie by Ayanna Mathis. This is a story of the great migration of an African-American woman who moves from Georgia to Philadelphia in the 1930s. And she has, gives birth over 20 years to 12 babies. And each one narrates in some way the story and tells the story of grit and determination. Noted Minnesota author William Kent Kruger has a new book out this year called Ordinary Grace. This one is about a teen boy who has an unhappy welcoming into the adult world as he discovers murder and deceit and adult themes that force him to make decisions and take action. If you're more interested in nonfiction books, this is a really great nonfiction book, a memoir by Will Schwalb called The End of Your Life Book Club. It's also great because it talks about a lot of other books that you may not have read in the course of the book. When Will Schwab was in his 50s, his mother, always a vibrant, involved person in his life, was dying of cancer. As she sought treatment, Will spent hours in hospital waiting rooms and chemotherapy rooms with his mother. And to pass the time, they started to talk about books and share books back and forth and to encourage each other to read things they might not otherwise have read. 
This is a stunning memoir of both Will's experiences, his mother's life, and the year that they got to share together through their love of books as he took care of his mother. Khalid Husseini is an author who's most famous for his book, The Kite Runner. This is his third novel, and it's called And the Mountains Echoed. It's interlinking stories that span over half a century, and it talks about life and death, travel, love, loss, separation, and war. It's a beautiful story that's told through little vignettes and little pieces all put together to tell the story of all the characters. Calling Me Home by Julie Kibler is the story of 89-year-old Isabella and her hairdresser, Dory. Isabella's white, her hairdresser is African-American. She convinces her hairdresser to take her on a cross-country journey to a funeral. Throughout the journey, she relates the story of her life, particularly her young adulthood in the 30s in the South and the interracial love that, she, that was forbidden to her. It's a touching, beautiful, poignant story. And finally, Life After Life by Kate Atkinson. What if you had the chance to go back in time and make your mistakes right again, to relive your life over and over? That's what happens to Ursula in this story. Through every choice she makes, through timing of other people in their mistakes, their timing, she gives, she's given the chance to live life like a palimpsest. One event occurs, but then it goes back in time and rewrites over the parchment of her life and gives her the chance to change not only her life for the better, but the lives of the world. It's a beautiful story by Kate Atkinson. These were just a few of the great books published in 2013. Stop by the library to see more. And thank you for joining us on this episode of The Library Show. Have a great day.